guys today uh, we're coming from my kitchen we're going to make some bread um, I had a couple of requests to make a video of me making bread um, always quite successful so I'm going to make bread uh, and I'm going to show you how now we're going to be using a very basic uh, recipe this includes um, plain flour or strong bread flour it's up to you which you use uh, the, without the strong bread flour, you won't have as much elas elasticity in your bread. Um, but it's basic. It's using flour, water, olive oil, yeast um, and water. So um, we're going to make that and we're going to get started. So I'm going to show you the ingredients. I'm also going to show you a picture of what it should look like at the end. I made one yesterday. Um, and it came out okay. So I'm hoping today's will come out the same again. But I'm going to show you the process, see how it goes for you. Um, bread's quite easy to make. It's just a case of uh, experimenting because you can add things to it. You can add seeds to the bread, you can add raisins, currants, etc. So whichever style of bread you want to make, um, I'll show you a basic recipe, how I do it by hand. Uh, we will be using a mixer to bring the dough together um, and those of you that can't uh, knead using your hands um, you can also use a bread maker to do the kneading for you should you have any issues um, with with mobility in your hands okay so let's crack on let's get the ingredients together the recipe together and i'll show you where to go from here Guys, one of the first things we must do is wash our hands, okay? We must have a clean work surface, clean hands. Bread doesn't like dirtiness. So wash your hands thoroughly. Um, we'll crack on with that and then we'll, we'll get going. Right guys, we're going to follow on now uh, and show you the ingredients that we need to do this recipe. Okay, uh, it's quite simple, isn't it? Five or six products that we need. Um, first product being um, olive oil. Okay, um, olive oil doesn't need to be expensive at all. Don't use extra virgin olive oil. Just use a very basic, cheap olive oil. Okay, um, main ingredient, obviously the bread flour. Now, I'm using strong bread flour, okay? You can use plain flour, okay? The only difference is the strong bread flour gives you a bit more elas elasticity to the bread. Um, I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference, actually. So, um, yes, uh, we'll be needing 500 grams of the bread flour, okay? Uh, you'll need a jug for measuring out water, Okay, we'll need 300 grams of water. You'll need um, a sachet of yeast, a seven gram sachet of yeast. Okay, you'll need some weighing scales. Okay, um, you'll need your hands if you're kneading by hand. If you're not kneading by hand, then you can use a bread maker. Now, the bread makers do, um, they make bread in stages. So what you can do is wait until the bread maker has made the bread all the way to the point it's going to do its first rise before that first rise you take the the, uh, the mixture out the dough out um, and then you can do the rest by hand you get a, a nicer bread um, <coughs> excuse me you get a nicer bread you can either then use a bread tin or as i do it i just put it on a tray mold it into a ball put it on a tray um, and cook it that way uh, but you'll, you'll see how i do it later on okay um i use one of these bad boys i don't know if you can see this let me try to see if i can pan down to it this is one of uh, a cook's professional uh, mixer i shall be making my dough with that um then um we'll be kneading it uh, and then we'll let it rise etc etc so let's crack on so the first thing we're going to do um, is measure out our flour so we need uh, 500 grams so I've got a bowl on the 
scales, I'm going to zero it out and we need 500 grams of flour. So let's get 500 grams. La -di -da -di -da, 450. 500 on the dot. So we're going to now get some a teaspoon. A teaspoon. I need uh, two teaspoons of salt. Okay, I'm not actually sure if I've got enough. So I've got one. I haven't got quite got enough left. So um, you do need. Let's put a little bit more in. You need two teaspoons of salt. Um, create a little well. And uh, you now need to cut your sachet of yeast. Okay, making sure it's all at the bottom. Um, pour your yeast in. Okay, there you go. And what we need to do now is basically them three ingredients, we need to mix them up. Okay, I'll just use a spoon, just mix them up well. Okay, normally I would do this in the machine. Um, oops, a daisy, there we go. You're gonna make a mess, aren't you? Um, so yes, yeah, so we mix that up quite well. Okay. Um, I know you can't see me, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to um, just get the mixing bowl that I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to grab a sieve. I'm going to grab a sieve. And we're going to sieve this all through into my mixing bowl. Okay. Okay. There's no real finesse to this. You just make sure it's sieved out. Just gets rid of all the large lumps. Breaks them down into the fine flour that you need. Okay, get the rest in there. You can now get rid of that bowl. My kitchen is really small, so it's very hard to, to film and show you things, but hopefully you'll be able to see me doing this. Okay, we don't need this anymore. You see how it's brought out some clumps of material. We don't want that in the bread. Okay, that might be, you. no, that's, a, look, that's wheat. Okay, so, yeah, we don't need that anymore anyway. So, there we go. So, we're going to put this current mixture um, into the mixer. Okay, I will pan out in a second. So, as you can see, I've now added them ingredients uh, into the bowl. That's just the three ingredients, the flour, the yeast, and the salt. I'm just going to lower my machine in. I'm gonna turn it on at one. Just, it's just gonna literally mix that mixture up a little bit more for me. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, the machine's very noisy, so uh, I do apologize. Um, I might speed this bit up for you on the video. Okay, all that's doing is just mixing the dry ingredients at the minute. So that's what we want. Okay, so that will do for now. I'll turn that off. I'm just going to lift this up. Let's see, I've got my dough attachment on on the bread um, on the machine. Um, so now I just want to make a little well in in the middle, a little well. Um, I want to uh, I want to add some water and my oil so I'm just running the hot, the hot tap to get it warm but then I'll add cold to the tap so we're going to add the oil now um, so with three tablespoons of olive oil okay this comes out rather slow doesn't it look at that blimey, blimey. Anyway, so um, there you go. So there's one right in the center of the, the flower there. Okay. 
Maybe number two on its way. Number two. And number three. So while I'm doing this, the hot water on the tap is, uh, is doing its thing. Although you can't see it. I'm just going to run my cold tap with it. And all I want is just tepid water. I don't want it hot. That will kill the yeast. I just want it reasonably warm. And I want 300. Oh, that's 400. Let's turn that off. 300 millilitres of warmish water. Sorry about the delay. I know you can't see me, but there we go. 300 millilitres of water. We add that to the middle. Okay. And literally close the machine up and we're going to turn it on. Okay. You'll see this working. Probably get very noisy again. But what this will do, I'll come away from it a bit while I'm talking to you. What this will do is bring all this dough together and suddenly it will just happen. It will just all come together all of a sudden. <coughs> I haven't got it on a very high speed. I've just got it on quite a low speed. I might turn it up in a second a little bit. As you can see, the centre of the dough um, slowly coming together and then it drags the, 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 the flour on the outside inwards. Um, as it gets thicker. This is exactly what your uh, what your bread maker will be doing. Um, and it's at the stage after this that you want to pull your dough out before it, before it does the rise. Uh, the first rise is probably the most important rise, to be honest. And uh, let's crack on with this. We'll wait for this to do. I'm going to speed the machine up. It's going to get very noisy. I might fast forward this for you. So it's coming together now. Most of the dough is coming together. This is quite a precise recipe, so it should work uh, every time. But all these ingredients that I've got is exactly the same for your bread maker. You just put the, uh, the ingredients in your bread maker. Here it comes, look. Can you see it coming together? I don't know if you can see that. It's slowly coming together. And suddenly we've got no flour on the outside. But we've got a dough that's come together on the dough hook. And you can hear the machine starts to struggle a little bit. There we go, look at that. If you find that your dough is a little bit um, runny, okay, which for some reason this is, you can add a little bit more flour to the mix, okay, it'll just incorporate, it'll just help bring it together a bit more. All I did there was just add another teaspoon of, uh, of flour. That's more or less there. What you'll find is eventually it will all stick to the dough hook. Which is what we're looking for. But yeah, we're all, we're all on the dough hook now. So uh, we'll stop the machine. That's all mixed up pretty well. It's not going to do any more mixing because it's all on the dough hook. So um, again, if this was your bread maker, you'd hear it. You hear the change of tone in your in your bread maker. Right, we're going to turn the machine off now. That's all good. And we are going to lift the machine up. It's all on the dough hook. So we're going to scrape that all off in a second. And I'll come back to you in a second once I've got the dough, which you need to take out and put onto a, a lightly floured surface. Okay, so we'll come back in a second. So here we are again, guys. We're now going to uh, um, knead the dough. Okay, your bread maker will do this process uh, if you need, need it to. Okay, so at the minute, we've got our 
dough in our bowl. Okay, we need some flour. Okay, we need to lightly surface, um, lightly spread out some flour on the surface that we're going to be kneading. And we might need a little bit more as we go along. Um, I'll zoom in the camera so you can see what's going on. You won't see me, but you'll see my hands, etc. Um, so uh, I'll show you the process of kneading. Um, just while I'm here, I'll let you know that really the kneading needs to be 10 minutes um, minimum, okay? What you're doing is stretching the uh, the um, the dough um, and you're, you're creating all that gluten, okay? Um, plain flour won't have so much gluten in it. Um, so let's get on with it and uh, get those muscles built and uh, this is a good workout actually, especially while we're all in uh, self-isolation, etc. So uh, yeah, a good workout for your arms and elbows. Uh, let's get to it, shall we? So here we go. So I'm going to grab some flour, gently sprinkle your surface, a little bit more than that perhaps. Okay going to be a bit messy I'm afraid okay grab your flour your dough okay it's gonna be a little bit sticky at this point obviously you need to make sure your hands are clean I've just washed mine again um, so just get some flour on your dough okay and this is it literally you just start kneading so what I'm doing here is stretching the dough okay you stretch it so I come over I stretch it and I'm back over again. I'll turn it over and I'll stretch it. Change the direction. Grab some more of that flour. You'll find it gets a little bit sticky on the surface. So uh, here we go. We're stretching it. Okay, I don't know if you can see what's going on there. Can you see as I'm breaking up all them fibres here? It's really... I love making bread. It's... Uh, it's a bit of an art, but um, if you can make good bread. So this is my technique. Your bread maker will do this for you. A little bit more flour because it gets a bit sticky. Okay, your bread maker will do this for you. Okay, keeping on the time. Ten minutes is what we're going to do. But clearly I'm going to fast forward this for you. Uh, hopefully turn ten minutes into seconds. So... Uh, you get the idea. I'm stretching it, folding it, stretching it, folding it. All the time, just giving it a good old stretch. I'm breaking it. I'm giving it a right old hammer here. You can be as rough as you want with bread flour. Um, with bread dough, sorry. Uh, a bit more flour. Okay. Some people might say I'm using too much flour, but... I find you need that to stop the bread sticking to the surface. It's where the old sweat starts to happen. As long as you're not dripping sweat into your bread. Disgusting. Right, there we go. So, just gonna keep that going for 10 minutes. I've been going about two minutes so far, so. Um, this is really important. Um, if you have a helper with you, then they can prepare a bowl that needs to be slightly oiled. It doesn't have to be olive oil. Um, I use olive oil because that's what I've got out. So, uh, see it's sticking to the surface there. So, here we go. A bit more flour. Stretch in, fold, stretch, fold. Each time I'm doing it, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'm stretching it, folding it, turning it around a bit. So hopefully I'm getting to every part of the kneading. Woo! Okay, grab some of that more flour because it's starting to stick again. Stretching, folding, stretching, folding. Okay. Ask somebody to make you a cup of tea at this point because you're going to be here a while. You see how it's stuck to the surface? So a bit more flour. Don't worry about using the flour. It's not going to harm how your bread comes out. In fact, 
You can't not avoid it, really. It's, uh, it's one of those things. Um, you need it so it doesn't stick. So, yeah, 10 minutes of kneading. Okay, give it a good old punch as well at times. Take your anger out on it. You see, I was a boxer in my past life. Oh, dear. So, we've got four minutes gone now. Dough actually enjoys to be treated a little bit rough. And as you can see, I'm stretching it, getting all that gluten going. Oh, it's sticking again. There's a bit more flour. So, for those of you that can't use your hands like this because of mobility issues, obviously I'm a pretty strong lad. So, um, Going back to the bread maker, um, you can use the bread maker. Some bread makers have a kneading function on them, some don't. I've got a bread maker. Um, I'm pretty sure I just have to keep an eye on at what stage it's at. Um, the kneading stage is probably the longest stage, I think. Um, and it's just before the heater turns on, and just before it starts to rise, you know, going to the rise phase. So, if you know your bread maker well, which you probably don't actually, um, most people don't know, they just get on with it, you know, they just press the button and it goes. But uh, if you get to know your bread maker, you know what stage it's at, um, you can follow it along. I do appreciate the idea of a bread maker is just to leave it and go, but, uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's quite nice to get a bit more intimate with your machines and your food and stuff. Know, know what's going on and the stages they're at. I guess you could put some really good music on now and, you know, get it going on. This is the hardest bit of making your own bread the hardest bit because the rest of it is mostly waiting okay so while we're doing this just so you know you need a bowl um, that's slightly greased with the uh, oil okay and you'll need some cling film okay that's in preparation for your your first rise which will take one hour in a warm um, but not too hot place. I always put mine next to a radiator um, because my airing cupboard actually doesn't really have any space. It doesn't have any space to put um, a tray or a bowl or anything. So this is how I do it. Oh, I'll bring on the Benny Hill music. We now have about three minutes to go, I think. Those are people that want to comment to say that I was out of sync. I was, didn't do 10 minutes exactly. Well, that's your problem, really. I'm looking at the clock behind me and I'm roughly going to do 10 minutes worth of kneading. You'll see why I'm doing this at the end of it. It's all well worth it at the end of the day. Okay, obviously you get a little bit messy here with the flour. The dough now is getting a little bit, well, it's a bit rubbery if you like. It's easier to, to, um, it's easier to knead. Any comments, anybody that knows better than me is welcome to comment of how to do this a different way. I think some people just, you know, they're like that, you know. I guess you could do that. It's doing the same sort of thing, isn't it? It's a bit like when you get some new plasticine, you're trying to soften it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, dear. Yes. Of course, at this stage, you could split this after it's risen. 
you don't have to make bread. You could split this into several sections. You can have different parts. I could slice that in the middle now and uh, make two little loaves, I guess. Or as many as you want. Depending on your needs. Um, as I said, this is the hardest bit of all, is the kneading. I think I've done about eight minutes now. I wasn't going to talk through this, and uh, but it's actually probably quite therapeutic watching it. I don't know. It's not for me, because it's knackering. So, uh, one more bit of thing. One more minute of kneading. Then we'll prepare our bowl, which actually needs washing up. So, because we used it earlier on. Oh dear. Anyway. So I hope everybody's keeping well during this time of COVID-19. But maybe this recipe will help you. This is very basic. As I said earlier on, you can use plain flour instead of bread flour and um, the shops are starting to run out of flour believe it or not um, so if you can't get bread flour just get plain um, you cannot and I repeat you cannot use self-raising flour it contains other ingredients that are incompatible with bread so let's just mop all that flour up this surface was cleaned before I uh, did this so uh, we're nearly there the bread itself give it a good old slap right so if you can see this my hands underneath quickly like that just turns it into a ball I turn it over turn it into a ball give it a nice little shape there's a nice little ball shape. Turn it back over. Give it a slap. Keep spinning it. It will turn into a ball. Beautiful. Look at that. Lovely. Jubbly. Right. Okay. Give me one second. I'm just going to clean the bowl. I will be with you straight away. So guys... We're now at the stage where we've made our dough. Um, we then now need to um, oil a bowl. So I've got the bowl, got the oil. Um, we have our dough. So the dough needs to rise. So basically the oil is to stop the dough sticking to the bowl. It allows it to move freely as it rises. We also can then cover it with uh, some cling film. So you can watch me do that. Um, and then we'll get on to the next process of the first rise. So let's grab our oil. All I'm going to do is drop probably, yeah, I don't know, two table, two, yeah, two teaspoons maybe. Get my fingers, make sure your fingers are clean. And I'm going to spread the oil around the bowl. Okay, quite generously. I'm not, at the end of the day, you do not want the dough sticking to the bowl. Okay, so the oil, as I said, it's there to help. The, when, as the dough's rising, um, it helps it move up the side of the bowl. Okay, so get my, uh, I'm just going to quickly wipe them off. I need to grab my dough, which is here. Just kind of stuck in there. I'm just going to reshape it quickly. Already that is starting to rise, so um, for video in purposes, I've been a bit slower. Um, basically, this goes into the bottom of the bowl. Going to grab some cling film. And you know, typical, I didn't prepare the cling film. This is going to be all, no, it hasn't. So cling film over the top. Be generous. Okay. Okay, so cling film nice and tight over the top. Okay, the cling film will move. Okay, 
And that's it really, that's prepared for our first rise. So what we're looking at doing now is finding somewhere um, warm, but not too hot. I tend to put it next to a radiator or an airing cupboard. This needs to be in the airing cupboard for, or next to a radiator for one hour. Okay, set your Alexa timer, set your timer on your phone or whatever you need to do. But at the end of the day, now it needs to be in there for one hour. So this is my dough now in place. Um, I've got it in front of a radiator. Um, I'm going to have an attempt to do a time lapse, but I don't know if this will work or not. So, uh, yeah, one hour. Um, and then you can, uh, we'll go on to the next process. Hi guys, welcome back. We are now on to the second part of the uh, um, baking process. We're going to rise the dough for a second time for another hour. Um, hopefully your dough has come out something like this. Um, mine is well risen, hopefully you saw that on the video. Um, we're now going to knock the air out of this, put it on a tray and uh, let it rise for a second time. Um, we'll crack on with that now and I'll show you how. Okay guys, so we're now going to start with the process of knocking back the dough. So I've grabbed myself um, some grease proof paper here. I also have a sharp knife and I have a tray. I'm just going to show you a quick tip. Um, I'm going to put the tray upside down. Just going to give the knife a quick cut around the outside. Um, obviously you want to be careful what surface you do this on. Give it a quick cut around the outside and hopefully, oh, oh no it's not working, is it? It's typical, typical that, it should work every time that, let's have a go. It's always the way when you're filming. So yeah, it worked, but most of it worked anyway. You get the idea. Okay, you get the idea. So that's my rubbish. Put that in the bin. All right, and obviously you turn your tray upside down. There you go, your tray's ready and waiting. Okay, so we've got our tray ready for our dough to be put on put that to one side. I need to grab our dough out of its bowl. So take the, uh, you're going to find that it's stuck to the, um, to the <laughs> cling film. It always happens. I slowly peel it off. It generally comes off. You will lose a slight bit of dough, I guess. Look, there you go. All right. So I now need to take the dough and uh, I'm going to knock it back but I'm going to do it in the bowl so can you see instantly I took the air out of it then it's literally just sunk down so I'm just taking knocking all the air out of it literally knocking all the air out of it that's what we need to do you don't need to do this too much you will find actually I'm finding that the bottom of the bowl is quite warm so I'm going to tip my dough out and come to the thing and I'm going to shape it I'm going to shape it back into that ball okay that I had originally I've knocked all the dough out sorry not the air out not the dough I've probably knocked it out if it was uh, alive but uh, they go into a nice ball remember that technique I use there. Look, look how well that's coming together. Okay, so we're now going to go for the tray, bring the tray in, lift the dough up, literally onto the onto the uh, 
greaseproof paper there in the tray and we're going to leave it like that. I'm going to grab some um, cling film again. This time, <coughs> excuse me, this time I'm not going to uh, wrap it up completely. All I'm going to do is just put a loose, a loose covering over the top. I'm not tucking it in. Well, I'm tucking it under, but I'm, I'm not. I don't really want it to uh, stick to the, the dough. So there you go. That's all we need. That's now going to give the bread a little bit of time to rise again. And it is again, it's another hour uh, back in your same warm place that you put it for before um, and for one more hour. OK, so let's see how it goes again this time. Right guys, it's uh, time, it's that time now. Um, you should have just come back from one hour, uh, that'll be your second hour of rising on the, on the bread. Um, mine has come out quite well, as you can see and you saw by the video. Um, we have a couple more things to do now and we will be putting it in the oven. So um, I'll show you the next process. Uh, you will need um, one of these, uh, a cooling, tray and you will also need um, a sharp knife in a second um, also the other thing is you need to ramp up your oven um, an ordinary oven is 220 degrees celsius or a fan oven at 200 degrees uh, that's gas mark seven um, i use a fan oven so mine will be at 200 degrees celsius okay so we'll get on to the next stage hi guys we're now back to the second um, after the second hour of rising, we're now going to um, look at our dough. Hopefully yours is uh, very similar to this. Um, you can see mine's risen very well. Um, uh, hopefully you enjoyed the little time lapse there. Um, we've got a couple more things to do now. We're going to just slice the bread with a sharp knife just to give it a little bit of texture. And uh, we're going to uh, put lightly flour the, the dough. Then we're going to put in the oven okay i need you now to put your ovens at um 220 degrees for a normal oven uh it'll be 200 degrees for a fan oven or well, that's gas mark seven for those who use gas okay so we'll now um ramp up our ovens um obviously you need to get them to temperature okay that's really important don't be tempted to put the dough in before the oven is at temperature okay so we'll move on to the next part so now we're going to take off our cling film which should come off quite easily okay let's we'll take that off i'm going to get rid because uh, we don't need it look at that does that remind you of oh dear gorgeous that's how it should be, nice and springy. Um, I'm going to grab a sharp knife. Uh, you'll need quite a sharp knife to do this. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to give it. Uh, I'm going to give it three slices. So you're looking at about nine centimeters long. So if I go across the bread, one, two, and it does pull the bed sli bread slightly but I'm looking just to get a little bit of an even cut there okay so that's given us three uh, nice slices there uh, I'm just going to grab some flour this is quite a nice part uh, the flour just give it a very light dusting with flour okay very light dusting you don't want too much on there because you'll find it just dries up and when you take the bread out, it just crumb, it just falls off anyway, it makes a right mess. So there we go. Give it a last little thing. Um, put the flour away. The next thing we need to do is uh, um, put it in the oven. 
So um, here goes. Let's grab our uh, very wobbly bread. We're going to put a place it in the oven. Remember, my oven's at 200 degrees because it's a fan oven. Your oven needs to be adjusted accordingly. There we go. Nice and centrally in the oven. Okay, and we now need to cook that for approximately 25 minutes. Okay, so we now need to uh, cook that for 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, you'll soon know when the bread's done because you can turn the bread over, give it a tap at the bottom, it sounds hollow. So that's when you know it's done. Okay. Okay guys, so here we go. We're going to take the bread out of the oven now. It's been just over 25 minutes. I'm going to take it out, see what it's like. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Lovely. So, as you can see, the bread's come out. It's very successful. So we just need to put the bread now just be careful, be very hot, turn it over, give it a tap, nice hollow sound, and now just lift it out and put it onto the uh, the cooling rack. We can just, just get rid of them in a second, they're going to be very hot, so be careful. So as you can see, a very nice loaf, and uh, yeah, that's how we do that. So everybody, as you can see, we have a nice loaf here. Uh, if you enjoyed this uh, video, please subscribe. Uh, it's always very handy to have our subscriptions. Um, if you have any comments, please do leave me any comments as well um, down below. I'll leave the recipe down below and I'll also um, uh, leave the instructions as well below. Just a little safety reminder for everybody. When the bread comes out of the oven, obviously it's very hot. Uh, best to give about half an hour to an hour to cool down um, and then you can slice into it. Um, just be careful of the safety, your heat, don't burn yourself. Okay, take care everybody, bye bye.